This is my latest amplifier project. As you can see, it's largely finished. I'll show you all the parts separately in a moment, but it's basically a MOSFET amplifier. We're going to measure the power online together. I haven't done that yet. This is the amplifier I managed to blow up my speakers with. And I have to say, it was not the amplifier's fault. If you connect a long wire to the input and let it buzz um, the way it does, most amplifiers will tend to make a horrendous noise, possibly even go unstable because it's not meant to be operated like that. But no damage was done to the amplifier. And I won't go on about the speakers again because I'm liable to break into tears if I do. Let's have a look at the various bits and pieces. Unfortunately, it's a little bit hard to show you close up in here. Um, that's the actual amplifier and it finishes here. I'll show you some manufacturer's pictures because since I've installed it, it's not that easy to show it. But there is something very important to tell you about. To the best of my knowledge, these modules aren't available in kit form, but you can buy it in a variety of ways. Now, I chose to buy it with heat sinks. This is the heat sink, which I've removed it from. It's all nicely drilled on the back. But the problem with it is these heat sinks are completely and totally undersized. The amplifier, even with just music power playing through it, I say music power, as opposed to sine waves, these get almost too hot to touch. And another point is the quiescent current on these MOSFET amplifiers is higher than you'd normally expect. So just idling, these do get quite warm. So what I've done is I've taken them out of my old amplifier and I'm using these heat sinks. And as you can see, somewhat different in size. And even saying that, these heat sinks, when you're thrashing it, get really quite toasty. I mentioned earlier that you can buy it in various guises. You can buy it without heat sinks, which obviously if you have adequate heat sinks, that is the cheapest and best way to do it. But with these heat sinks, it's actually a quite, way, a quite a good way to buy it because you don't pay that much for these heat sinks and they're useful for other things as well. But you can also buy the amplifier with just an L bracket for easy connecting to a standard flat heat sink. Because you can see if I turn this over, excuse the um, heat sink compound everywhere and the numerous fingerprints. But as you can see, there's quite a bit of a drilling gone on. Uh, these holes are clearly for a different project and aren't used in this one but you would have to drill and tap these seven holes if you did it yourself. Let's have a look at the uh, power supply now. Excuse the scribble on here, but I just wanted to remind myself that these are potentially at uh, mains potential. And there's not much else in here that electrocute yourself on, but by doing that or doing that to earth is not recommended. So. It doesn't look good and I will eventually remove it. But this is the power supply. It's a switch mode, as is obvious, I think. And its claim to fame is it was not very low cost. In the past, I've, I've bought some switch mode power supplies, which you would have seen in some previous videos, and they've not proven to be very reliable. But this one was quite a bit more expensive and this particular one is a dual 60 volts output. So plus or minus 60 volts. In reality, it works out at 61.2 volts, but I don't think we need to worry about that. Just a few more watts. But it's claimed to be a thousand watts. 
Now, I don't know whether that's consumption or output. The manufacturer, or I should say the distributor of these power supplies, I did contact and ask them for more details and, in, and including a block circuit. I didn't expect them to give me a component um, breakdown, but I thought a block diagram of, of what it would like would be good to show myself and to show you for that matter. Um, they said it would be too easy to copy if that was the case. And I thought, that's got to be a joke coming from a Chinese manufacturer because very little of what they do is original anyway. It's either application notes or something that they've... Now, I have to say, I've damaged this module already. Now, towards the output side of the board, there's a little socket down there and it says 0 and 15 volts. And right behind it, there... No, where am I pointing to? There, beg your pardon. Just almost off screen and completely out of focus. Let's move that round. There was an LED on there because you know everything has to have an LED. It basically shows powers up. So that LED comes from this output here via that resistor and it's just a series resistor that runs off that 15 volts. And it doesn't mention anywhere whether that 15 volts is usable or not. So it looks quite a big socket, but when I put my finger next to it, you can see it's really quite small. And I put my test meter across that to see if there's 15, result, 15 volts. And of course, you know what I'm gonna say. I shorted the pins. There was a slight crack and um, the LED went out and no more 15 volts. What this is, I have no idea. Um, in one, ground, in two. I've, I've no idea what that is. If so, somebody is smarter than me, and I'm sure there's quite a few people like that, they might be able to tell me what that does. But I've basically blown up that part of the board, which is a bit annoying because I could have used that 15 volts. As to whether this will actually provide a thousand watts, we'll assume that it's rated very similar to a lot of Chinese stuff, and it isn't. But saying that, I've had both of these amplifiers um, really consuming a lot of power, um, and to the level of almost pain in the living room with my speakers, prior to blowing them up, that is. And it does, with music power at very high volume, the 61 volts is rock steady. It doesn't sag at all. But that's the good news. The bad news is I was giving it some welly yesterday. Not grossly loud, but pretty loud. And it was, um, um, I'm embarrassed to say, disco music. That dates me, doesn't it? And um, we know what sort of music that is. Lots of bass and low end and... The heat sinks of the amplifier got quite warm, but nowhere near clipping level. But I've been listening for about 25, 30 minutes, and all of a sudden there was a slight click and silence. And I thought, oh God, I've blown it up, or it's blown one of the fuses. So I took the lid off, and these heat sinks on here, that one in particular, was too hot to touch. Um, so I can say that it's, that it's thermal cutout works very well. This heatsink was quite hot, but that one was too hot to touch. And you know when you take the lid off and you stick your nose in there, that smell of warm but not blown up electronics. And it was purely coming from here. Now this is the lid, so there's reasonable ventilation. But I suppose, to be fair, there's no ventilation coming in. It relies on purely the heat coming out. In all honesty, I thought, well, it's a switch mode power supply at a claimed 85 to 90% efficiency. So we shouldn't really be producing a lot of heat from here on that basis. But it does get very hot. And 
in the end I ended up with a fan on the top blowing in there and that cools down nicely so I don't really know what I'm going to do now. I may have to put in, remove this switch mode power supply and put in a transformer, put back the transformer that I use for to drive the L12s. It'll reduce the output because that only produces, I think from memory, 51, 52 volts. Whereas this is, it's debatable that I would, I would use that because the L12s um, used to get uh, very loud. So I may have to do that because I, I don't really know how I can put a fan in here, to be honest. Because there's no real space other than fit it in the lid, maybe. It's not very often I play at those sort of levels, but that's neither here nor there. It should be able to do it. Now, I thought I might have a problem with the um, amplifiers getting too hot for the particular heat sinks, but I don't think that's going to be an issue, to be honest. This is the speaker protection module and uh, delay start. I've reviewed this previously and um, so far, I'm, I've been delighted with it. Uh, just to recap slightly, it's like many of them are with this circuitry here, but the relays are basically car relays. They're designed for uh, contacts to be rated at low voltage and high current, because in the past I've had trouble with the Omron relays so I thought I'd try this module and the other claim is that it's operated from this little power block here which is directly from the main so you don't need any other windings or a 15 volt from a power supply that you've previously blown up. This amplifier is very very quiet but saying that it's also less gain than the L12s. I estimate it's about 3 dB less so you won't re be able to run it without a preamp of some sort. I doubt, unless your signal source is reasonably high output. Right, this is one kilohertz and we're about to whip it up to clipping level. I can hear it just below clipping and we have 32, just over 34 volts, which according to my mathematics is 144 watts into 8 ohms. They do claim 150 watts, um, but for Chinese watts that's quite close, isn't it? Just to have a look at some square waves, that's 1 kilohertz at approximately about 30 watts as an estimate. Quite nice. No overshoot. This is 10k. Again, no nasty overshoots. And about the sort of shape you'd expect. 20 kilohertz. Looking at the low end now, this is 100 hertz. Again, please forgive all the noise and crap on the square wave. It's not coming from the amplifier. And the last one, that is a 10 hertz square wave. Just one last quick measurement. This is the high frequency response. We're on the dB scale and it's 1 dB down at 55 kilohertz. So pretty good. The low frequencies is just flat down to a couple of cycles, so or hertz I should say. Now I'm going to show you this purely out of interest. Now this is a complete version that you can buy on AliExpress. Now it's wrong in a hundred thousand ways, but I'm only going to tell you a couple of them. As you can see, it uses the small heat sink that I previously shown you and it's just screwed to the bottom of the chassis. There's no ventilation from the bottom and the heat sink fins are enclosed inside the cabinet. Now, from my own limited tests, that is going to cook beyond belief. And 
it's supposed to be rated at 300 watts into 4 ohms and I've never even tried mine on 4 ohms and I've, I've told you the result. That transformer is also too small and the power supply on there uses shocky diodes and it's one that I've actually had before and it's pretty good but the diodes, the rectifier diodes aren't mounted on a heat sink and they get really really hot so this whole product is a recipe for a bonfire. As a final thought I'm sure you're going to ask me what does it sound like well as you know I've had a bit of a disaster with my loudspeakers so for the moment I'm going to reserve judgment other than to say before I put it all in its case I had it all spread out all over the bench on a piece of um, hardboard and preliminary tests I actually do like the sound a lot whether it's as good as the L12 or better than I'll have to reserve my judgment to a bit later but certainly at the moment it's as good and absolutely bulging with power um, especially good for blowing up loudspeakers on that cheery note I'm off for a coffee Thanks for watching, I do appreciate it.